All right. Ryan Stanelson here with Accelerate Marketing. And um, I am really, really excited to introduce to you a, uh, a friend of mine and also somebody that I is a colleague, has been doing what we do for many, many years. Um, David Ciencio from Yext. He is an expert in local SEO, reputation management and marketing. He's owned his own business and done and implemented these tools that um, there's uh, David, you want to say hi? <laughs> hey, what's up? Most people actually call me Rev. You, you Rev. and your, your friends are welcome to as well. So. Yes, yes. And, and that's why I just, you, you put David in there. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go with David. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and, and he just changed his hat. He's got, he's got his cool hat on. I love it. Um, he's, a, he's a really, he is a cool guy. He's got uh, a lot of knowledge. And we are going to deliver on what we, what we promised in the actual, in the title of this, uh, this video right up front. You know, one of the things that constantly is changing uh, is the ever, ever changing landscape of Google and, um, and, and specifically Google local search. And so, um, you know, one of the things, Rev, why don't, first of all, I'll let you tell people a little bit more about yourself before we get into the questions. Um, go ahead and, and let people know a little bit more about you. Uh, so anybody that goes and Google searches me since we're talking Google, they're likely to find a bunch of information about cheeseburgers. Uh, <laughs> uh, I sort of own the uh, search results on expert burger taster, but that is not why we're here today. Uh, <laughs> I work at Yext. Uh, I work in our partner and our small business division. So I'm sort of here to help companies like you and uh, your customers be successful in using you know, our software to help with their business. Uh, but before this, I actually used to own a marketing agency, again, not unlike you too much. Yep. Uh, I specifically worked in hospitality. I'm clearly into food. We already got through that. Yep. Uh, I also used to own a small bar here in New York City. So I've sort of sat on like every side of, of you know, what this digital marketing world is. I've been the business owner. I've been the agency. And now I work for the company. So That's really cool. Actually, we have, we have a, a, a teammate on, at Accelerate Marketing, Skip, that's done the same thing. And one of the reasons why I think he's so good at what he does, and I think Crystal, who's on as well, who's one of our account managers, um, would agree with this, is that one of the things that makes Skip so good at what he does, he's Infusionsoft certified, you know, he's a um, Google partner, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And he's one of the guys that gets things done here at Accelerate Marketing. He's, he owns his own business as well, like currently, and which is kind of interesting. So I think that that real world application of this stuff is so, so important. I mean, if you're, you know, it's like, like Brian Dice says, and like we say, you know, we actually do this stuff, you know, we don't, we don't just do it for other people. We do it for ourselves. We actually drive traffic to our own offers um, in order to get new customers. You know, what a, what a, what a concept, you know, when I, when I accepted the job offer here at Yex and I'm, I'm very passionate about what we do. Um, I actually said, can I please keep one customer? So technically I still am an agency, but I, I manage uh, one, one bar restaurant here in New York city. So I still like, I wear the agency hat and I still wear the small business hat. So I know I'm in the trenches. So. Well, you, I think you have to be, to be on the tip of the spear, so to speak, you know, I mean, it, because things are changing all the time and, and that's a great segue into what we are here to talk about today, which is, you know, the, the, what, a, you know, what has, Google changed recently and what are the three top strategies in your mind, Rev, that you think, um, having done this for many, many years, I know, you know, I, I know there's certain things that I would look at, but I, you know, I don't want to, you know, I, I know that, that there's, see, there's things that you see that I don't see, you know, in, in what you do and all the different businesses that you guys work with, which is thousands, you know, I mean, we work with hundreds, you guys work with thousands. So, um, I, I want to defer to you on this and say, hey, you know, what, what are the top three strategies for ranking on Google Maps right now? I was, and by the way, I was just talking to a client of ours before we got on, not even an hour ago, um, a property management company who we primarily work with. And, you know, he, this topic came up. They always want to know, how do we get on Google? How do we get on that all coveted maps, you know, in the search results when somebody types in, property management and or whatever keyword that you want to rank for for your business it doesn't have to be just property management but any keyword and your city when you type in your top keyword that people are typing in and your city are you showing up on the maps and if not how do you get there that's what we're talking about right now just to be clear because some people don't really understand this world and it's it's really pretty simple i mean we all use google and um it's it's constantly changing and there are some things that you can do 
in order to not game the system. I mean, I don't want to use those words, but where you can actually, you know, stack the deck more in your favor, so to speak. And so what are, what are those things that you think? Of? Let, let, let's call that ways to beat your competition. How about that? Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> the, so the very direct answer is there is no way to guarantee a result in, in, in Google search or any, there is no guarantee. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of signals that we have been given by Google and the other publishers and search engines on ways that a business can optimize that they come up for a relevant search, right? And I think the easiest way to explain that, this was sort of released by Google in uh, April of 2016. It said that search is based on three factors, right? And so it's it's uh, it's uh, relevance, distance, and prominence, right? And so relevance would be the actual query. So let's clearly, again, I'm into food. So I might say, you know, best burger near me. I've told Google a couple things right there, right? I want a burger, right? So they assume that I want it for lunch and I want it now, right? So that's that's my relevance. Then I say distance. And so that could be near me or if I was coming to visit you and I put, you know, best burger in your town or whatever, um, that's the distance. And then the one that really sort of trips people up that was really the addition. And, and I will tell you, and I'm sure you'll agree, is the secret sauce to, to search is prominence. Um, prominence really simply broken down is uh, recent high ratings and reviews, right? So if, if a business, if you know, like I would say, like if you have a pizza business on this side of the street and a pizza business on this, this side of the street and they're literally the same, you know, they both have whole wheat crust, they both offer fresh tomatoes, like whatever, it's the same pizza. Um, and this guy got a review two days ago, that's a five star. And this guy got a review today, that's a five star. This guy's more likely to come up first in search. Wow. And so that if you can if you can nail those three things, you're more likely to come up and search, right? And so how how do you do that is really sort of the question. And honestly, that's sort of the problem that Yex uh, Yex solves. But I think we should maybe talk about you know what we call digital knowledge, what some people call listings, uh, what people call business, because that might directies. help. Yeah, directies that might help people to understand. Um, what it is. So the way that 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 Google looks at those three factors, the ranking factors, is they're looking for a consistency of information. So if your business hours are different on Yelp than they are on TripAdvisor versus any other site, you're sending like a really un, a signal with a lack of confidence that your information is correct to a search engine. You're telling Google, man, this might not be right, right? And so if they're looking for a business that serves burgers at this time. And again, you got a guy on this side and a guy on this side, and this guy has the same hours of operation on all the sites. And this guy does not, you're going to get recommended this guy. Right. Yeah. And so not to say that all hamburger joints are owned by men. So <laughs> you can have a burger gal. Um, Crystal's, on, Crystal's on, by the way. She can um, mute you at any time. <laughs> but the point being, right, like the key is to make sure that your information is not just correct, but it's the same on all of those sites. So your name, address, phone number, all the facts about your business. And again, that's what we call digital knowledge management, but have to be the same on Yelp, Bing, Google, Yahoo, Foursquare, City Search, Yellow Pages, Dexwipe, literally all those sites. And so if, if you want to know how to come up and search, it's you have to manage your data. It has to be accurate. It has to be up to date. And it has to be, you also have to reputa have reputation management. And that's really sort of it. Yes. Well, and that, and that leads me, I'm just, this just always progresses naturally because we're, you know, and we're just going to, you know, like a tennis match is, you know, volley back and forth here because a couple things that came up, I would also add to that in, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what we, we, we preach to our, to our customers, clients is, is that, is that not only do we want that same NAP name, address, and phone number to be consistent across all 71 of the top directories that we manage through the knowledge manager with Yext, um, but we also want it to be the same on the website, to match up with what's on the website as well, which is so important. And that's what's so great about our next one of our next topics that's coming up, which is schema markup, which is something that you guys are making it much easier for us to implement for businesses because you're giving us a way to just basically create that schema language that yeah. Google and Bing and Yahoo understand and that they, they use their spiders to go find. And if you don't have it on your website, you're not going to get that real estate that you're looking for in the search results on mobile and on the desktop. And, and so, and, and there's actually a tool to test for that. It's called the schema. You can just Google this right now, you know, schema, or it's a schema Google test tool. And then you, and Google's got a test tool. You can plug your URL right in there and 
out will come whether or not if you know if you've actually got schema correctly on your website if you don't you're just that's one of those factors that's going to determine whether or not you rank higher on the on the search results as well right Rev? yeah so i mean you, you almost beautifully explained it there and i think it was 2008 google bing yahoo kind of got together and said look we're all out there crawling the internet. We're all looking for information and whether that's like instructions on how to like properly put, build a house or like, where do I find my next meal? Like it's information. Yeah. And as they were trying to aggregate this information, you know, Google spends and Bing Yahoo spend countless dollars, uh, you know, server space gathering that information. And so they were like, we need to make this easier for ourselves. So ultimately we can deliver better answers to people who are searching for information. Okay. And so they, what they created was a language called schema and you can go to schema.org and it's very heady and I don't suggest it. It's a bit of a brain buster, yeah. but, but the simplest way of it, it's a series of code that you can have on your website that tells Google without them having to do a deep search, what your business is. Right. So if you're a, you know, you're, you're a mortgage broker, you know, you're, you're a maid service, you're a restaurant, you know, you, whatever you do, property management, whatever it is, you can basically insert this code into your website and then mark it up for all those things. You could put your name, address, phone number, hours of operation, all that other kinds of stuff. Now coding a site for schema is really hard, right? And it takes like really intense levels of coding and you have to understand it. And schema is being updated all the time and Google spending tons of money with Bing and Yahoo and, and figuring it out. So if you're looking for your own solution as a small or a medium sized business, or you're, you know, you're trying to actually build schema, it can be done. It's just really hard and it's always changing. The, the tool that you're talking about that you're using for your customers is called knowledge tags. We, we have a team. I mean, I'm actually sitting in, in the engineering area nice. all teams are filled with our engineers they're here all day to make sure that our product is up to speed with schema best practices and all these other things wow. so that like you don't have to, and your customers don't have to worry about changes and it will take care of it so yeah. that you know, your customers can come to you and say, okay, look, accelerate my friends, please help me. And you go, okay, you're this business. You're open to this hour. You pop it into the code. It goes in the next knowledge manager. And then basically what happens at the end of that is, that business's website is perfectly marked up to give the best, strongest, correct signal to search engines to say, this is the type of business that we are. And these are the things that we offer. That's so powerful. And, 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 and I've actually seen, by the way, Rev, where the, the search results are different with schema, where literally you actually get more real estate, you know, no pun intended, where you actually take up more space, you get more prominence, you have, you have additional things that are said about your business that wouldn't be said if you didn't use schema because schema is what those, those web crawlers are looking for. It's, it's the language they understand to interpret what's there. It's a universal language that they use. Now, there's a difference between schema markup, which is something that you don't see that kind of goes, runs in the background. And then there's schema tags that actually are things that you see on the website, like name, address, and phone number. And that's what I was referring to earlier when I said that the name, address, and phone number needs to be consistent from the knowledge manager to the 71 directories. And then with tags, you can make sure that that same name, address, and phone number is consistent on the 71 directories and on your website, because it actually refers, those tags actually go in the footer or the header of your website so that you, when you change anything in the knowledge manager in one place, it changes on the 71 directories and on the website itself. And that's, yep. that's beautiful. And that's because Google is just, look, the, the analogy I like to give is, 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 is a, a tree. Okay. Google my business, which is what everybody wants to rank on. It's 70% of the search volume out there is like that big Sequoia. Okay. And what, what gives that Sequoia it's, 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 growth is and it's and it's prominence you know to, to use one of your phrases is those that root structure you know people don't really discount the, the root structure but the root structure is those 71 directories think of every one of those 71 directories as being a different root you don't really see them a lot of people don't use them but it doesn't really matter because without the roots the tree does not live and it doesn't produce fruit and the fruit is is you actually showing up in the search results for your keywords and that's the bottom line and it, that's, that's the analogy. And when I say that analogy, I just, you can tell I've done this a few times. I mean, so I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've given that analogy so many times because when I say that, you know, people get it. They're like, Oh, okay. I get that now because you know, it's like they gloss over if we use, you know, directories and knowledge tags and schema. But if you give that kind of an analogy, they're like, Oh, okay. That's why 
even though I don't go to four frog square and all that other stuff, you know, <laughs> uh, I know that it's a root and I know it's important because it's tied to that Google, my business page, which is, that's the really important, you know, that's what you want to get to rank in the search results. So, um, you know, I, I think it's really important also, you know, I want to touch on what you talked about reviews and reputation. Um, I think that that, you know, that's part of the prominence component, right? That's what you, you, you tie in. What's very interesting about this Rev and you dropped this little knowledge bomb on me the other day. And I was like, really? Like, whoa, because I really stopped to think because if this is the case, it changes a lot of, of what businesses are going to be doing. So if you're listening, I would definitely like, I would I inch a little closer to hear what Rev's going to say right now, because when I learned this, I was like, holy cow. I was shocked, number one, but here, let's just first lay the groundwork. So what's the difference between first party and third party reviews? That's a great, I love this question. Um, I, and I actually didn't know until actually I worked here, but so third party reviews are reviews that live on a website that's not yours. So what we traditionally think of TripAdvisor, Yelp, Health Grades, and like whatever, wherever you would leave a review, those are third party. And then first party reviews are reviews that live on your actual website. Right. So you're asking your customers to leave a review for your business, not on Yelp, but on your actual website. Yep. Um, and in terms of in terms of like ability, we'll say with using analogies, uh, mm -hmm. managing third party reviews is like having the Hulk on your team and having first party reviews is like having all of the Avengers. I think we talked about the <laughs> Superman, Batman and the rest of the Justice League. But I mean, really, that's that's what it is. Um Google and the other search engines look at the signal of you managing first party reviews on your site as being a much more involved business. And so they, they give higher ranking priority to that. And oftentimes if you are managing it, they'll move your star rating into the organic search. Um, so if you've ever done a search and the 10 blue links come up, you know, literally after the knowledge card and the three pack and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it'll move your average rating into the organic search results. And then those results in search come up. I forget the number, but it's more than a hundred percent more clickable than ones that don't. I mean, it, it's literally like the deciding factor. So in turn, like I like to call it the super juice. So if you're doing first party reviews and you can get those stars to come up in your organic search, uh, search rankings like you're basically going to crush your competitors well let me let me just show my screen because i think it's really important for people to see this because i, I think it's really it's just critical um i i want to i always say i like the show rather than tell and 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 crystal would i think jump on me if i didn't do this because she's like you always tell me to show not tell <laughs> yep <laughs> yes yeah. i would oh see there she is by the way by the way you know that's crystal if you guys, you guys were wondering you know every once in a while when this when this this female jump there she is there hello she is. hello <laughs> introduce yourself really quick crystal so hey know. everyone i'm crystal woohoo <laughs> <laughs> that's what she's known for too the woohoo all right yeah all our all our customers know crystal for for woohoo and and her awesome glasses um all right so let me let me uh type this in so i'm going to type in our company which you know before we do anything we always like to use ourselves as the guinea pig we always and another thing that i say around here is, you know, we like to, you know, we like to test things first and we like to model good behavior. Okay. Is, is what we say. Um, and because in hopes that our customers will actually do this stuff, we want our customers to actually do the same things that we're doing. We can't ask them to do something that we're not doing ourselves. Right. So here's, you know, accelerate marketing, San Diego reviews. And what we did is, is, you know, we heard about this opportunity to get these stars to show up and, and we were like, hey. look at that. <laughs> Look at that, bada bing. I was like, if that's true, we are doing it today. And didn't I, Crystal, like about three months ago, four months ago, when I heard about this, I was like, let's get yep. this started. Let's get this party started. We did, and, and there you go. And this is what we're talking about. And what you were saying, Rev, is that you get 100% more click-through rate when, you, when people see these stars associated with the link. Is that what you were saying? I don't remember the number off the top of my head. It's more than 100 yeah. Follow up with me after this. I'll get you the actual number. So when people ask you, you'll have the real answer. I just don't have it in front of me, but it, well, it, it, it real superpower, uh, the ability for people to choose you in search. Well, I think, and so there's one thing where people are going to choose. And I, I would agree with that. Like we understand that 
we see this all the time that when, when the stars are associated with anything, it's first of all, it's the only, pretty much the only gold thing on this page. So it, it immediately draws your eye to it, that, and we immediately, like our eyes go to the stars or something about like, when I was a little kid, I used to get the little gold stars, you know, I think like psychologically, like that's like embedded in all of us. And so our eyes naturally go to that. So you know, hearing you say that that is, you know, the, the numbers is, is not surprising to you. The other thing that is surprising, though, is, is, that, is that, we, that Google actually gives you a, a boost in terms of your rankings. Like, and we found this, that this page was not showing up, Rev. This, so I can, I can testi testify to that because this page was not showing up in the search results and about, and Crystal can attest to this too, about a month or two ago. And then finally, when we added the, the review code to this page, which by the way, there is some, there are some specifics that I want to talk about. One of them is the fact that, um, that Google doesn't want you as, uh, and I just talked to this previous customer about this because he was like, Oh my gosh, I want that. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, first of all, like you said, and we, you know, preface is we can't promise any, you know, we we don't own Google, so we don't know what they're going to do, what they're going to not do. All I know is what, what happened with us. And, and so having said that, um, we, we did, we did see a, this, all of a sudden this page just rise up in the rankings and show up all of a sudden on the first page. And look, if we can get somebody to go to a page that we own, that's a much, that's a, that's a big win. Now, having said that, you're noticing that, you know, we don't have the stars associated with our homepage. Google has said in their TOS is, or in, in their, whatever you want to call them, I guess it wouldn't really be a, be a TOS, but it, it's just something that they said is that they don't want the schema review code to be added to the homepage and they're not going to show the stars with the homepage. Is that correct? Uh, as far as I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So because it, one of the things that this, this client of mine was saying, Scott, he was like, man, I would love for those stars to be associated with our homepage. And I'm like, well, you know, we can get it, to show up with a sub page, like a review page or any other page. So we're just going to add, you know, the review code to three, four pages and, and especially the ones that are already showing up in the search results for key phrases, like the business name city and the word reviews, because that's what people are doing before they actually make a decision to go with the business or not go with the business. So it's very strategic. So that's how we're playing it. And that's how I would play it. If I were you and you're watching as a business owner, is first do that all coveted search of your business name, your city, and the word reviews, because we know that about 30 to 40% of people before they make a decision, that's what they're typing in. So, yeah. um, yep. So with that, you know, I, I'd like to, oh, and I, there is, uh, let's see, I'll, um, let me go here. I'm going to, I do, Crystal, any questions that, that are coming up from the, anybody viewing at all? Uh, no questions that no questions yet. Okay. Um, you know, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, how, you know, we talked about, you know, how does a business rank higher on Google yeah. maps? Um, how, you know, staying in line with the, the reviews, you know, what do you think is the, the most effective way for a business to get reviews? Is it, cause I know that, you know, one of the tools that we implement through the X platform is, you know, a, um, a, you know, like a one page landing page where we ask people to leave reviews. Have you found that to be the most effective way to, to get reviews? And also um, the agencies that you guys work with, by the way, we're as an agency, we're a white label, you know, partner with Yext and we provide, you know, the Yext platform to uh, the companies we work with. But, you know, I'm wondering if you see what you see out there in the community, as far as, you know, what is the most successful way to get reviews on Google or, or, or even just for first party reviews? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, so that's an interesting question because each of the publisher networks, right. They have different rules about review generation yeah. and there's a couple guidelines that if you follow, you're kind of going to be okay with all of them. And people are going to be bummed out to hear that. Like the, really the first guideline is don't ask for reviews. <laughs> <laughs> um, Basically, Yelp in, in particular has really been outstanding about this. There's a, there's a massive, some Google this later, if you're paying attention, we don't need to talk about it here, but there's a massive problem out there with fake reviews, like m insanely massive. Um, it's a bit more on the product side of things than it is like local businesses, but it's a massive problem. Right. And so to fight that, Google and Yelp have sort of come out and said, look, 
If you're asking for people to review your business, we think that's disingenuous. We, we think that that practice is you're trying to game the system. People should want to review you if they want to review you. Like, okay, that's fine. But you know, where does that leave you for business owners and you really do care about reputation management or they're working with Accelerate and you're helping your customers with that? So the language that you can put around that are things like, hey, you know, we really love reviews on Yelp. You know, you can, you can say things like you can't like give a call to action to leave review, but you can talk about reviews or you can talk about the importance of reviews. And one of the things that I think is amazing, um, we work with a, a, a little tiny hamburger joint here in New York city called Thunderbun. They're awesome. Um, they're, they use the X directly. They don't work with an agency, but they will take the reviews that come in and then share people's reviews to their Facebook page. Like, Hey George, thanks for leaving this nice review on, on, on Google. And then they'll put that on Facebook and so like, first of all, they're doing something really nice to that one customer, right? But they're also then telling all their other customers that they care about feedback from their customers. But then to get back to the point, they're also telling people this is important to us. So, you know, it's a read between the lines thing, but something like that is a really good way to let customers know you care about reviews. And then the other answer is really obvious. It's reply. Reply and answer to every review on every site that matters. And somebody might say, I don't have the time to do that. I'm too busy to do this that's when you call Accelerate and you guys do it for them. But I would tell you, respond to every review, positive or negative. Absolutely. And I, I couldn't agree with that more because number one, Google's going to see that you actually care. And I, and I do think in the 10 years or so that we've been doing this as, a, as an agency, that there is a bump that you get by actually responding to reviews. Um, when, when business owners have responded to reviews, we've seen a little bit of a bump and we track those, those rankings over time. Um, one thing that I forgot about and I, and I wanted to come back to is, is, this, is the fact that what, the ironic thing about these first party reviews is that, is that you're actually in control of that, that review process. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? And also, I want to point out to people that the, one, of the, one of the secrets is that when you get reviews, not just for first party reviews, but when you actually get reviews on Google and I've seen this with my, my wife's interior design business here in San Diego. Um, you know, when, when she gets reviews, she does get a, a nice bump in the number in, um, in her rankings for both Google My Business and even potentially for her website. And I want to also circle back, uh, Crystal, if you'd remind me to, to talk about this as well is, and, and ask uh, Rev about this is, you know, the importance of, of posting content to send signals to the 71 directories like, photos, et cetera, through the knowledge manager in order to get an extra bump. Um, I think that's something that's really, really important um, to talk about. But, um, you know, I wanted to, like I said, circle back. What, what, what control does a business owner have when, when they send people to that review gathering tool that, that we offer uh, through, the, through, the, through your platform um, to, get, to gather first party reviews? What control do they have over which ones get displayed or, or do they have control? Yeah, so that's a good question. So, you know, people think like, oh, I'll go get this first party regen you know, generation tool, you know, or I'll have Accelerate do that for me and they can just delete the bad ones. Well, sorry, you can't do that. You have to operate reviews on your site just as if somebody had left it on Yelp and you had no control. Um, and the software that you're using won't it, like it, it makes sure that's the case. Um, but what it can do and what's kind of unique about it is there's a seven day quarantine. So if somebody goes and leaves a first party review on your website that you generated, right. Or that you're generating for your customers and somebody says something bad, Hey, I had really bad service or I didn't like the way this person talked to me or whatever complaint they had, the bathroom was dirty. Yeah. It goes into quarantine for seven days. It doesn't go live to your site for seven days. So that gives you seven days to go in and respond or ask that person a question or, Hey, just say, I'm sorry. Right. And you can't ask them to change the review. You can't ask them to delete it, but you can be a human and you can say, I'm sorry. And you can apologize or same thing. If they leave a five-star review, it's still going to quarantine and you can go, you are awesome. Thank you so much. You within those seven days, you can push that live, right? So if you're happy with the response, you're fine. You can put it live and they can still go change that review afterwards. But there is that seven day period where you can actually manage a situation, right? And so it's really helpful because look, most people, when 
there's statistics out there that match to this. Most people aren't leaving a review because they're like, oh, caveat emptor. Like they're looking, they're, they want to make sure that the next customer, this doesn't happen to. That is not the primary reason for leaving reviews. It is completely self-purposed, right? It is, this is my chance to tell you how I think, right? Mm-hmm. They want to be recognized by the business owner. Yep. Yep. So it's a perfect chance to go in there and say, hey, look, we care. Whether it was a bad day or a good day, like we care about you. Yes. Um, and then you can basically, what happens over time, we find out is that most people when they leave a review are either doing a five or a one, right? And it's like the threes and fours that are the bulk of the universe and actually sort of control your average rating. And by being active and getting first party reviews and all these things we're sort of talking about, you're going to bring out more of those fours, you know? Yeah, yeah no, no doubt. And, I, and, and that's part of the consulting that we do, specifically Crystal and our team, when, when she talks to our customers is, is, you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, how do you, how do you respond? People are like, well, how do I, re-? you just respond. Like you just, you know, like ask them to, you know, or apologize and then, and say, Hey, you know, I made a mistake here. And then we find that about 30 to 40% of the time they do change it without even asking, without even you asking them. Um, so that's always a, a good, you know, a good choice. Now, the other thing is, is, you know, for third party reviews, that actually does help the search rankings. Are oh, you, absolutely. I mean, big time. And I, I, it's a totally different topic, but we're talking about how to, you know, bump up your search rankings. There's, in addition to posting those first party reviews, the way that Rev was talking about and the way that you saw on, I didn't go to the page. I'm going to in a second here because I want you guys to see how the, you know, what the review code looks like. Um, but basically, you know, just putting that code on the page where people can see those reviews is going to give you a bump in and of itself. The other thing that's going to give you a bump is when you actually get reviews on these appropriate directories like Google, Bing, and Yahoo, especially because they will actually, just by you getting reviews on those third-party sites, you will bump your rankings up as well from that process. We've seen, and we track all this. When we take on a customer, I mean, we want, you know, we, we promise a, you know, five to one return on investment. You know, it's a, it's one of our our guarantee. Um, And we track all this, you know, we track, we put a call tracking number on, you know, on the 71 directories and on their website. So we can see the increase in the number of phone calls over time, even when we just do our foundation products, you know, which is, you know, which is Yext and, um, and, or locate local, you know, local SEO and, and reputation management. That's what we do for our foundation product. The bottom line is, is that, you know, these things are so important and there's so many, it doesn't really take a lot. And, you know, you can, you know, get, you know, you can, you can take this, if we build, one of the things that we, that we found the, bis, the biggest success with is, is in building a reputation culture, we call it, in a business, where we train the staff, we educate them on how and when and, and what, you know, if, you know, when to, when to you know, we, we, I'll tell you, I mean, we, we tell our customers to ask for review when they had, when they had a great experience. And, um, and when that happens, if somebody's saying, like, I want to leave you a review, we say, hey, you know, just follow follow this structure. We call it the we call it the uh, the three W testimonial. It's what benefits you received, why you would recommend the business, and what um, what who you are, what benefits you received, and why you'd recommend the business. If if you stay consistent with getting those three things every time, you're going to get a great review that's consistent. Because in a study, we found that it was found in over when a thousand people or more were were questioned about this, they found that. Um, the third most important thing with reviews is, or second or third was actually what was said in the review. So if you just got a review that just says, Hey, Ryan's great. Like that doesn't help somebody make a decision. You know what I'm saying? Like that, it doesn't help at all. But if, but if, if there's specificity in there that says that, you know, Ryan and Crystal and his team, you know, you know, got us from, you know, the nowhere on Google to the first position for, you know, 80 new keywords over the last 27 days, like that's very specific and they got us, you know, and, and now we've got, you know, 27 reviews and we've got a five, 4.8 star rating from a 2.2, you know, 27 days ago, like that helps people make a decision. That's going to be a much more impactful review because people can see the specificity in that review. I don't know what those specific, those specific touch points are in your business, but I would highly recommend that you, that you 
you guide people in that way. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I actually was reading your reviews the other day. <laughs> uh, and there was one that I read where somebody said, look, we're up 80 Google reviews and 102 Facebook reviews and we could not be happier to recommend the service. Like that's, you know, congratulations, by the way, that's an awesome review and hopefully a happy customer. But yeah. you know, speaking in terms of the, the, the businesses that you're working with, if they can incite that from their customer base to like want to go out and go look this place did this for me or they're easy to work with also make this choice you'll be happy like you know your your benefit your business is going to benefit in a number of ways well it, what, it, what it does and crystal and i get this sometimes some people are referred to us and or even even referrals sometimes want another referral like they want to know who else to be worked with can i get their number and i'm like well, let's just go to our reviews. I mean, there's 172 people. How, how many and, would you like? <laughs> yeah, like, there's 100. I mean, they're going to say the same thing if you call them up. I mean, so, you know, it's like, what do you want? You know, and, and so yeah, th that's the other great thing. And, and, it's, and we really leverage it in that sales process. It's like, don't trust us. Trust the third party, you know, reviews and, and or the ones that are on our website, you know, the first party reviews. So um, having said that, you know, let's switch gears here and go into you know, I love numbers. I love to be able to quote numbers specifically, as you can tell, Crystal knows this. And, and one of the things I know, Crystal, that I wanted to circle back to is, is, you know, this concept of leveraging your tool, the knowledge manager, where we can actually post photos to all 71 directories, because you've got that API connection to all of those directories. And you can, you can change the name, address, and phone number instantly at the drop of a hat. And it literally just goes out to all 71 directories as opposed to, you know, going in there and changing them each one by one by one, you know, your hours of operation or whatever it is that you're going to change. You don't have to do that anymore. It's, it's, I, cause I've, I've been doing this long enough to remember what it was like when we claimed, you know, when we're back in the days of, you know, the more directories you claim, the better. And so we'd go and we'd, and we'd claim 500 directories and we'd, and then the business would go, yeah, the business would go, Oh, um, Oh, you know what? I know we filled out that form and we gave, and you said very specifically that it's really important. This information is correct, but we forgot the suite number. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, and so we're like, Oh, okay. And then, and of course that's not in the scope, but we're not going to, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm a very giving guy. So I don't, you know, I mean, so inevitably we eat that and I'm like, you know, so, but the, the, so thank God for a, <laughs> Like no, this, they, you know? they say tragedy plus time equals comedy, which is why we can go back and laugh. That it, you know, when I when I owned a bar here in New York City, like we knew there was like no joke on the block where our bar was, there were five other bars. Yeah. You know, let alone there are twenty five thousand liquor licenses in New York City. Like, how do we fight that? Yeah. And I was like, we can be better at digital marketing than any other bar. I know, like I know that. Yeah. And so that was like what we hung our hat on. And I remember going from, you know, Yelp to Yahoo to Bing to Foursquare to I didn't even know how many of these places and updating stuff. And we did events three nights a week in the bar. So I would literally spend an hour every single day going from site to site to site. I wish I had Yext. Yes. <laughs> the See, last time I would have saved. Oh my gosh. Like that. Yeah. yeah that. Wow. And, 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 and so, so, you know, to, to that point, like what, how, how, you know, it's one thing changing the name, address, phone number, hours, office hours, holiday hours, et cetera, you know, on all the sites. But, you know, the other great thing that we can do is we can upload a photo to Knowledge Manager and get a nice little bump in, in, this, in the search results just because Google and these other 71 directories see that you're active. And, and that activity is, and, and you, you know, you talked about uh, prominence, which is, you know, uh, ties into reviews and recency of reviews. Well, that prominence also ties into content as well in recency of content, because if you haven't posted content for a long time, Google and all these directories are, are looking at that as well. And I'm wondering if, you know, what your thoughts are on that. And if you've got any numbers that would identify, you know, the, the nice, the percentage bump that a business might be able to get in just doing that. So I, I don't know that there's a universal number. If there's, I don't know what it is. What I can tell you is what I know about how search works. And basically, Google, Yahoo, Bing, even Yelp, all of them are really looking for what I call signal strength, right? And yeah. so if, if somebody searches for a business and your business comes up, right, and they click through, like they said, you know, best burger near me, and they choose your restaurant, and they click through, they make a reservation, 
get directions, make a phone call, whatever. They take some action that yep. sends a signal back to the search engine that that query was a good, that the result was a good for the query. Yep. The more times that somebody takes an action after searching a business on Google, the stronger that signal to Google gets. And the more that Google or the other search engines are going to refer that business to the top of the search engine, right? Yep. And there, there's a number of ways to do that. One is what I just said, which you can't control, right? Is somebody seeing the information and clicking to your, whatever your directory, your listing, your site. But another way to send that signal to Google is constant updates from the business, mm -hmm. Right. So if the, you know clients are working with you or they they're managing their own listings, updating their holiday hours once a month, adding new photos, adding you know anything that you can update about your directory. So maybe you have a special promotion or featured message, whatever. But photos is a really good one because it's easy to do. Um, but the more you are in, con the more you're updating the those fields, the stronger your signal strength gets. I'm I'm going to give you an example. Um, this restaurant that I still work with in New York City. They've been in the Yex platform for 14 months now, and they're on a one-way street in a town where nobody drives, right? Especially to or from a bar. Yeah. We have dropped, we have done 62,000 requests for directions through Google in the 14 months they've been on the platform. Now, to give people context, there's another customer we work with. I'm not going to say who. They have nine location restaurants. They're amazing. But they're in a town where everybody drives. And they, in total, for all nine restaurants, have done 55,000 driving requests. So why is this one little brunch spot in New York City getting so much attention from the search engines? Because the signal is so strong and it's exponential, right? So the more you manage, the more results that come through, the more information you put through, the stronger your signal quality gets to Google, the more they're going to suggest your business because it has delivered a result to the customer who's using search. Okay, so what you're saying, and this is really good, Crystal. I see you taking notes there because you know Crystal's <laughs> the one. <laughs> Crystal's the <laughs> Crystal's the one who's as the account manager. A lot of times, as as her hat that she wears as the account manager, sometimes is is that she is the one who is. We're having these strategy sessions. She's having the strategy sessions with the customer, and you know the number one thing they're trying to figure out. And we're going to send this video out to all of our customers so that they watch us. I want them to be educated. I want them to know this stuff so that they understand how important those darn strategy sessions are so that we can get this stuff done. Like not just talk about getting it done, like get your phone out, take a picture, text it to me. If you don't put it in knowledge manager, I am right now. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. Like while we're on the strategy session. And I'll, give, I'll, give you, I'll give you another anecdote here. Yeah, we we have a customer that we work with directly. That's like a, a very large restaurant chain right there on our enterprise side. They actually put 72 photos from the brand per location in the knowledge manager. Right. And although we can't guarantee and you can't guarantee by using it that you'll like the photo you're put in will come up first because the publishers just don't allow that you can drown out all the other user generated content. So like, again, you're this burger joint we keep talking about and I don't know what I'm doing with my phone. I take a crappy picture. Maybe it's actually the end of the meal and there's just grease on and a nasty bun on the plate. And I put that on Google. If you're the business owner, do you want people to see that photo or like the 15 photos you took and maybe hired a photographer to take about like, that's what you want. So to your point, you know, updating photos that you approve and pushing them out on the web is way more powerful than letting user generated content speak for your own business. Totally. And, and let me, so, so a couple things, number one, by the way, I want to, I want to just say this because I know Crystal has been putting some comments in here uh, with links of um, if you want to get our top three strategy, a case study with that talks about our top three strategies um, you can just go to you click on the link and it will take you directly into a messenger conversation with us where you'll be able to immediately um, uh, get a PDF of that one page case study. And then um, if you want to, we'll even, you know, if, if you do want to, you know, learn how to use this tool, we have a, a special offer potentially if you want to, to use the tool for like a, a 30 day trial, you know, to just to, to try it out for, I think it's like 20 bucks. Um, awesome. yeah. So I, I think that, you know, what I really, I want people to do is I want people to get this case study so that they really understand what the, the top three things are. And we gave one bonus one as well. I just personally put this PDF together myself, uh, three nights ago. Um, and, uh, and, and so I, the, I, I want people to click on that link. I want to just take a pause to just to mention that because 
it is important to do this stuff and, and you, you know, seeing the results that you are, you know, with, you know, those photos, that's going to really reinvigorate us. I mean, this is great for, uh, you know, for us to hear because we knew that that was important, but to hear from you, the results that these enterprise, you know, companies are getting um, from doing this. I mean, I look at for the small business, this is, this platform really levels the playing field. You know, you have the opportunity even more so of an opportunity because I've worked with a hundred you know, location organization. And trust me when I say that they're very, they can be very disorganized, you know, even with one person just focusing on just this one thing you have, all you have is just, if you have one or two locations, you almost have an advantage, you know, because you are ultra focused. It's your, you know, it's your baby. And so you're going to do what it takes to do these things. And you're going to take the action that's necessary. And that will propel you ahead of these enterprise, you know, companies, a lot of times, if you do, if you just take some of these simple steps, you know, and, um, you know, to hear, you know, you had said that really, yeah, I mean, it's just basically the point you made earlier, Rev, is that just posting those photos definitely sends those signals and, and will definitely help, you know, bump their rankings. And that's, that's, yeah. And you didn't, you don't know exactly how many, but yeah, that's what I was trying to get to is, is that one location, I mean, was exponentially more, uh, queries for, you know, d- driving directions. I mean, that's just, and, and that's the only difference between them and that other, the other company was they were just posting photos and stuff like that or, or what? Uh, I mean, you're talking about the restaurant I work with. Yeah. That, yeah. That one restaurant that you said had like 6,500. I mean, um, f- photos is not uh, clearly I'm an expert on what to do the X cause I work here, but, yeah. um, we do a lot with their account. Like I'm constantly updating the information, but ph- photos is a great example of something you can update on the reg, you know, or, or even the offer, the offer is really, you can change the offer really quick. That's the other great thing about the system is, is that you can change the offer on all the different directories at one time. And, and I think there's at least 15 to 20 different directories that, that give you an offer right? that where you can actually put an offer on them, which is great. I know Yelp does and a few others, but let me, let me show my screen here. I want, I just want to show you what, so, so here is, here's, here's what, this is all it took for us to, I mean, I mean, I don't know if you've seen this yet, Rev, but only three, three first party reviews is what it took for us to get those, that, that five-star rating to show up. And awesome. for, I was asking Caitlin, our account manager of the day from Yex, how many, you know, what the fewest number of reviews that she's seen in order for somebody to get the five stars to show up. And I think we kind of, I think we, we won that. We, we won that award. Um, three, <laughs> we, we, we definitely want to get more, um, but we've, we focus so much on getting, you know, the third party reviews. Now we're kind of going back and stepping back and getting these and uh, for good reason. And it's, and it's paying off. So, um, you know, having said that, what, is there anything else that, that you can think of or about and in, in around, um, um, you know, just, local SEO that, that we haven't talked about yet that you think people would benefit in hearing? Um, I mean, you know, honestly, there's a hundred signals you could send to the search engine that's going to help your business. But the foundation of that is managing your digital knowledge. It really is. It's the basis by which we call it preventing a leaky budget. Like if you're spending money on Facebook advertising, right. And then somebody sees your business and they pull up a search engine and they search about you and then they can't find you. Like what was the point of spending that money? Right. And so to to me, in terms of local search, like digital knowledge management is absolutely paramount. If you're not doing it, you might as well just don't do anything else. It's not worth your time. Well, okay. One thing we do get a lot of questions about, and I'm really, I I do want to touch on, and that's a, that's a good point. Not managing your digital knowledge is is critical. It's it look as a business owner right now, um, especially hearing the horror story of what I talked about before, knowing that there is a solution now that will avoid you having to go out and claim 500 directories and, and manage your name, address, phone number, office hours, and everything on all of these yellow page-esque type online directories that we used to use the old good old book, the old, good old yellow pages for in the past. Now there's multiple different directories and some directories that are just specific for certain industries. For example, Avo. For, for attorneys or whatever. I mean, you know, I mean, you've got all these niche specific directories. And if you're not on those directories, man, I mean, not only are people just going to those directories, if you're an attorney to find you, let alone going to Google, but you know, if again, the roots and the tree, you want to, you want to claim those directories so that that tree, that Google, my business tree 
is strong in producing those, those, uh, those, the fruit of, of uh, those search results. Now, having said that, you guys also, one of the things that we really like about, about uh, your system is, is that it allows us to prove the value that we're delivering. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that people say is, how do you get my phone to ring? I just, all I care about, Ryan, is just, you know, is my phone ringing. So, you know, one of the things, and, and, I, and I'm always, I use another analogy here. I use the, the, the tortoise and the hare. It's like, you know, it, it might not be sexy, you know, doing local SEO. And um, it might not be a system where we can just turn it on tomorrow. And all of a sudden you just, you know, you, your phone starts ringing. So that's what I mean by, by sexy. Um, it's, it's more akin to the tortoise as opposed to the hare. And what I would submit is having done this for 10 years, I almost didn't believe what I was, what I, even the stuff that I was saying in the beginning, because I, but even though my gut was telling me it was the right thing to do, I learned after three or four years of doing this. And this is what I would ask you to do is if, is if you are looking to go with an agency, whether it's us or anybody else, ask them what their experience is, ask them what they know, if they've done this before, how long they've done it for, because if they haven't seen this stuff, they're not going to be adamant with you in terms of what is the right place to start with, because I am convinced having seen this for long enough. And you've seen Crystal with enough conversations with our customers with, you know, like, you know, good old Dr. Dotson yesterday or Scott today, or, you know, any of the, you know, Colin from New Zealand or, you know, Greg from, you know, Australia. I mean, we yeah. talk to these, we talk to these customers day in, day out, <clears throat> and they always come back to me and <clears throat> inevitably they're like, well, Ryan, you know, basically what they're, what they're, they're looking to me to give them the recommendation that maybe, you know, they don't want to hear, but they, they know that it's, it's kind of like when I go to the doctor, you know, like the doctor doesn't always tell me what I want to hear, but they tell me what I need to hear. And, 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 and that's, and I, I'm a big believer in, in doing that, even if it's, even if it means sometimes maybe not being so favored by our, by our client for the first three, four, five, six, seven months until we start seeing that tortoise, you know, itch, inching, inching up on the, on the finish line um, because it does take that long sometimes, but inevitably this is the beauty of, of local SEO is that, is that once for the most part, what we found in doing this decade is that once once we get you there, it's pretty hard to get you not there. <laughs> Does that make sense? And, and 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 so if there's one thing that you take away from this is is that you know because we do it a little bit in reverse. We we start with reputation management and also reputation marketing and local SEO. We didn't even talk about reputation marketing because that's what you were alluding to earlier with the photos. Yeah. Post on Facebook, which is a huge component because what I always like to say, a review that somebody doesn't see, it's like a, a tree falling in the forest. If somebody isn't, isn't there to hear it, do they actually, does it actually, you know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing with reviews. If you don't promote your reviews, you, it, a, a review is only as good as the number of people that see it. So we take a review and we magnify that thing out there. We put it everywhere so that everybody sees it. Um, and, and so that we get that when we market with it. So we market our business with our reputation. Um, and so anyway, and I actually bought the domain years ago, social proof marketing with for mm. a lot of money. Um, if you guys want to buy it, actually it's for sale. Um, <laughs> um, but it's, it's a great domain and it's, and I bought it, gosh, it was expensive when I bought it. But anyway, so here's the, the, the bottom line is, is that, is that businesses, um, I would start with this, in my opinion, and, and I'm curious what your feedback is on this. I would start with this, even though it might not be, especially if, and I would just preface this, especially if you've got a, um, if you've got a somewhat of a moderate reputation, maybe a three or four star rating, and or if you're not showing up in the search results, I would definitely start here. And here's why. And, and I want to hear what you have to say about this is because we can drive traffic through Google AdWords and SEM and Facebook advertising, but if we're driving traffic to a bad reputation or results that aren't showing up when, with those ads, um, in other words, people see your ad and then they look down and they see, they see the maps. And if you're not showing up on the maps or in organic, then, and, and or if you're showing up on the maps and you've got a bad reputation, you, you, that ain't happening. You know, people aren't doing this, you know, with your business, you know what I'm saying? 
It's funny because I guarantee like the same type of business. Again, we use a restaurant. Like say you have somebody standing out in front of your business. You're in a high traffic foot area and you're giving away samples in front of the restaurant. And people, oh, I'll taste it. And then they walk in and order. There's no way you would walk into that restaurant and they would have like a dirty floor or like the sneeze guard was broken or like a sign. It's the same thing. It's just online, right? Yeah. Yes. It's not, it's not. And so many business owners don't make that connection. They don't. And, and it, people, what they, what they realize is that, is that 80% of people trust those reviews online as much as a personal recommendation, you know, I and mean, that's, that's the, those are the numbers. And so, and so um, anyway, I think that, you know, if, if, you know, before we, we wrap up here, cause we're coming up on an hour. Um, is there anything else that you want to add that we haven't, that we haven't talked about? I know that we, um, we touched on a little bit about reputation marketing, you know, getting those reviews out there and your, your social media. We touched on obviously, you know, the, the three main factors that you, that you addressed in the very beginning, um, which are key, which is prominence, location. You guys use a different and then relevance. Um, and um, those three factors are key and, and you can leverage those, you know, through getting reviews, you know, claiming your directories, you know, posting content regularly. And we didn't even talk about suppressing duplicate listings. You know, that's another thing that, 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 that could go on for hours. Yeah. Uh, so here's the one thing I would have to add. So a lot of people sort of get obsessed about coming up in search ranking and yeah, that's important, but I don't, that's not how I like to think about it. Um, I like to think about it of sales funnels, right? And sales funnels is usually a conversation that B2Bs have, right? Like, oh, how do I get my sales funnel? And a lot of consumer facing businesses don't think about a sales funnel. You know, your Joe's pizza shop, you don't think about the sales funnel. But what the internet has done is basically shortened your sales funnel. If somebody says pizza near me, they already have intent to purchase, they already want to buy some. They're already hungry, right? If they want a lawyer or a property manager, whatever, dry cleaner, whatever they're looking for, they already, like their wallet is in one hand and the Google, you know, Google search is in the other. Yep. And so the internet has made it possible for small and local businesses to harness a sales funnel and actually have one. As long as you come up in the moment that they're searching, right, you're going to close that sales funnel, right? And some might call that SEO or search, but I really look at it as like, well, you, you have to be there in the moment that matters. And the mm -hmm. moment that matters is I am looking for a gluten-free restaurant or a re restaurant with gluten-free pizza that has a seven o'clock reservation that has valet parking is kid friendly. Right. And doesn't cost more than whatever. And is rated four stars or higher. Like all of those are signals. So if I put that search in and the more we're searching on, on this thing, right. And asking Siri for it, the more that information is going to become, you know, managing that information is going to be important to making sure that sales funnel closes, you know, for your business. I love that. And, 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 and even on, on Alexa as well now, I mean, you know, the, with voice, the voice searches. So great summary. And, and I, I couldn't have said it better. I mean, it's, it, you've, you've got to show up and manage all that knowledge in one place, preferably so that, you can manage it efficiently and effectively. And so that you're not, so that you're spending your time doing what you do best, you know, as opposed to trying to manage your 71 locations and, and Google and Bing and Yahoo and your, your reviews and all that. So, you know, um, if you want to get a hold of us, um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you, David? Me? Uh, you can email me. I'm, I'm small biz at, at yex.com. Uh, I'm also on all the socials. It's just my first name, Rev at Ciancio. So, Okay. Or, or Google expert burger taster. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I want that job. That's, that's a really, don't, it does, it does not pay. <laughs> so don't get any ideas. You're not, yeah, you're not going to be right. the next burger taster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then if, if you want to get a hold of us, um, you know, we, we really love, you know, engaging with you guys. You know, we treat, we really truly do and test us on this, you know, send us uh, a Facebook message, uh, take us up on our offer in the link, click on the link, um, have a one-to-one -one conversation with me. We, we, I love crystal will attest to this. I love responding with audio and video messages in messenger. Um, and, and it's, it's a, and also delivering value. And we're going to deliver value in the form of a PDF. That's going to give you a case study of what we did specifically in order to actually get these kind of results for one of our clients. So go ahead, <clears throat> click on the link that, that Crystal put in the comment. Yeah. 
And then, um, yeah, I mean, we, we really, it's just facebook.com forward slash accelerate marketing, um, is, is our, um, our Facebook page. And then if you want to go to engage with us, um, there's a keyword that you can type in to get that. It's just SEO and it's, and you would just go to m.me forward slash accelerate marketing and, and then just type in the word SEO is the keyword and immediately you'll get that PDF. And, um, and that will start a conversation with me or crystal and, and, um, yeah, and we'll, we'll go from there. I mean, so Rev, thank you. This is good. And, and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to sending this out to, you know, to our list and, and helping educate them on, on all and on the importance of those strategy sessions that we have with them so that we can, you know, keep that relevance up and that, and that prominence up for their business so that we can keep those rankings up. So thanks. And with that, we'll end it and, uh, we'll talk to you soon.